Good evening everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. This is the chart of the Bitcoin from BitcoinCharts.com up to date as of the present. You can see we hit that high of 62. We'll go to the other charts here in a minute, but uh, of interest is this flat line here that we had that was around that 48 price level. We got to near 50 and backed off, created a sort of pennant, and you can see today we just blasted out of that thing. Not on super high volume, you'll note. Uh, not nearly as high a volume as we had back here at uh, 15 or so. But uh, significant volume, and uh, you can see we're kind of moving straight up. Kind of moving in a uh, way that uh, makes the past irrelevant. My guess is, my prediction this morning is that we're going to run straight to $100. Uh, before we pause, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. So let's go over to Bitcoinity. You can see here that we are starting to consolidate at that 60 level. Uh, you can see the volume that took us up. Uh, we'll move out just a little bit here um, out to the 30 minute. But uh, you can see the volume that that took us up here and uh, the volume is, is quite high let's get out a little bit farther and we'll go ahead and put on the light version so we're not really getting that view uh, let me push it out here that was the bars that's why so here's the initial uh, the initial break up to 50 uh, the 48 was the point we were looking at uh, the market seemed to be locked under 48 and then we had that massive volume come in that took us not only through that 48 point but it took us right through 50 through the old high the market uh, backed off a little bit and uh, then just took off from there so there really wasn't much hesitation I would not be surprised uh, tonight to actually see a run all the way up to say 75 overnight but uh, we'll have to wait and see on that uh, the last one is the uh, Clark Moody chart and you can see there uh, this chart shows you that that volume spike that took us to 62 we just hit 62 exactly there you can see and then we got the sell off all the way down to 53 so about nine points now we're rallying back we're probably going to see some backing and filling you can already see the next pennant forming on this and uh, that's going to be important the market looks like it really wants to go higher so uh, that's really big news today now the that big news is right on the heels of some very very big news I covered on the blog today and uh, that is the news from FinCEN that's the financial crimes enforcement network that's the Department of the Treasury uh, that is responsible for enforcing laws, the anti-money laundering laws. Uh, so they gave a guidance today uh, regarding uh, the exchanging or use or administration of virtual currencies. So quite timely. We know with the news that uh, I believe that Mt. Gox is uh, repatriating, in a sense, to the United States. Um, but we already know that the various exchange, uh, exchanges that have uh, anything to do with currencies and uh, money, and that's what we're going to be looking at, not virtual currencies, but real currencies, are already in compliance with the Know Your Customer and anti-money laundering laws. Uh, that's already been clear, but uh, the clarification here uh, has to do mainly with uh, the important is the application to Bitcoin which has to do with decentralized uh, cryptocurrencies uh, or virtual currencies. So let's read some of this. The Financial Crimes Enforcement Network FinCEN is issuing this interpretive guidance to clarify the applicability of the regulations implementing the Bank Secrecy Act BSA to persons creating obtaining, distributing, exchanging, accepting, or transmitting virtual currencies. Such persons are referred to in this guidance as users, administrators, and exchangers, all as defined below. 
a user of virtual currency is not an MSB and uh, that's a money uh, business a money servicing business under FinCEN's regulations and therefore is not subject to MSB registration that's a user and record keeping regulations however an administrator or exchanger is an MSB under FinCEN's regulations specifically a money transmitter unless a limitation to or exemption from the definition applies to the person so now they're going to give us the uh, difference between currency and virtual currency FinCEN's regulations define currency also referred to as real currency as the coin and paper money of the United States or of any other country that is designated as legal tender and that circulates and is customarily used and accepted as a medium of exchange in the country of issuance so that's pretty clear there and they clarify more in contrast to real currency virtual currency is a medium of exchange that operates like currency in some environments but does not have all the attributes of real currency in particular virtual currency does not have legal tender status in any jurisdiction in other words it's not recognized by the government for payment of debts public and private this guidance addresses convertible virtual currency this type of virtual currency either has an equivalent value in real currency or acts as a substitute for real currency so you can see they're addressing specifically the uh, value of these virtual currencies and they give you the background the definitions of user and exchanger now it's clear here that the user is going to be exempted it says a user who obtains convertible virtual currency and uses it to purchase real or virtual goods or services is not an MSB under FinCEN's regulations so the user is already exempt and the user is able to purchase real or virtual goods so if you had a miner for example who uh, their only involvement with Bitcoin is mining bitcoins and then they take some of those bitcoins they mine and they use them to purchase real or virtual goods or services they are not an MSB they are not regulated by FinCEN regulations now the issue is going to come uh, when we talk about the exchanges and uh, there's a definition of administrator but the thing we want to look at here here's E precious metals the main one we want to look at here is is D uh, I'm sorry uh, C decentralized virtual currencies that's Bitcoin a final type of convertible virtual currency activity involves a decentralized convertible virtual currency one that has no central repository and no single administrator that persons may obtain by their own computing or manufacturing effort that's Bitcoin a person who creates units of this convertible virtual currency and uses it to purchase real or virtual goods and services is a user of the convertible current virtual currency and not subject to regulation as a money transmitter by contrast a person that creates units of convertible virtual currency and sells those units to another person for real currency or its currency equivalent its equivalent is engaged in a transmission to another location and is a money transmitter in addition a person is an exchanger and a money transmitter if the person accepts such decentralized convertible virtual currency from one person and transmit it to another person as part of the acceptance and transfer of currency funds or other value that substitutes for currency so there's your definition we'll let the lawyers sort it out to me what this says is that uh, what FinCEN is saying is that if you're a miner of, of virtual currencies Bitcoin Litecoin any of these and you're using that as a medium of exchange to buy or sell uh, virtual goods or real goods uh, you're a user and you are not subject to their regulations and uh, likewise it, it's uh, if it's not involved with uh, a real currency or a substitute for a real currency then uh, it's not subject to regulation now that gets back to my last couple of videos when I was talking about uh, trading and arbitraging 
virtual currencies. Now the two exchanges that I covered were Virtuex and uh, the BTC-E. Now both of those exchanges actually have uh, dollars for Bitcoin, rubles for Bitcoin, uh, and uh, so under this definition those would actually come under uh, the regulation as money transmitters. Now if the open question that remains as I suggested if someone comes up with an exchange where they only exchange cryptocurrencies uh, amongst each other value cryptocurrencies and perhaps uh, I don't know about this someone have to clarify gold or silver rounds certainly not eagles or maples or those which are tied to uh, national currencies but let's say silver rounds or bars if those were exchanged for cryptocurrencies and there were no dollars, euros, pounds, or yen, or any other currency involved, then I think that would probably be something that uh, is not subject to FinCEN regulation. So that's the clarification. Now we have to look at what is FinCEN and why are they there? What do they do? Well, they're basically trying to regulate money laundering. And... Uh, to get an idea about how big of a problem that is, uh, the UN has actually done reports on that. This is a Wikipedia article on the illegal drug trade. Uh, read a little bit. The illegal drug trade is a global black market dedicated to cultivation, manufacturing, distribution, and sale of drugs, which are subject to drug prohibition laws. Most jurisdictions prohibit trade except under license of many types of drugs by drug prohibition laws. A UN report said the global drug trade generated an estimated $321.6 billion in 2003. So who knows how large that figure is 10 years later. Maybe twice, maybe three times. Maybe it's a trillion dollar market. So obviously in a market that large, uh, there's going to be a tremendous need for money laundering. Uh, money laundering referring to the ability to wash the profits from illegal proceeds and uh, make them legitimate. Now, how are you going to do that? How are you going to wash $300 billion to, uh, say, roughly a trillion? Well, we have the recent money laundering case uh, against HSBC. This is December 11, 2012. British banking giant HSBC agreed to pay a record $1.92 billion settlement Tuesday after a broad investigation by U.S. federal and state authorities found the bank violated federal laws by laundering money from Mexican drug trafficking and processing banned transactions on behalf of Iran, Libya, Sudan, and Burma. The settlement, a combination of forfeitures and civil penalties, shows the London headquartered financial powerhouse for years deliberately channeled hundreds of millions of dollars of prohibited transactions through its U.S. arm. And it goes on. So let's look at some of the numbers here. Uh, it says that HSBC spent more than $290 million to prove its money laundering. Uh, detection system didn't work out so well. But uh, let's look at the numbers here. Uh, they're just simply enormous. You can see the details echoed findings of a July report by the Senate Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations. The panel found evidence that two HSBC affiliates routed nearly 25,000 Iran-linked transactions involving $19.4 billion. And uh, it goes on and talks about the billions and billions and billions. And we know from the Wikipedia, uh, the illegal drug trade, uh, it's going to be pretty obvious that uh, this money is going to have to hit banks. So what does that have to do with Bitcoin? Well, Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Uh, we'll go back to the main site here for uh, Bitcoin charts. And you can see here that at the top they give you the total BTC. And the total BTC is right there. It's 10.9 million. So there's 10.9 million. You can see we're right at about 60. So uh, we'll say the market cap for Bitcoin is roughly 60 or I'm sorry, uh, $660 million. That's going to be the current market cap for Bitcoin. 
Now, the other thing that I wanted to point out is I don't have the statistics in front of me, but others have talked about the fact that a very large percentage of the Bitcoins are locked up in uh, these wallets uh, and they don't trade. So my guess is, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, my guess is 25% is out there in trading, 75% is roughly locked up. So now we're talking about roughly uh, two two and a half million uh, bitcoins uh, with roughly a market value of 150 million dollars so the question is going to come in now if uh, we're talking 150 million dollar market cap for all of bitcoin and with these numbers with uh, the HSBC fine just the fine alone being a 1.92 billion dollar fine and uh, then of course the size of the illegal drug trade of anywhere from 321 billion up to a trillion so we're talking roughly a hundred to a thousand times uh, the size of money that's just in illegal drugs and uh, so the money laundering that goes on in the world obviously at this point in time is far far too large uh, for Bitcoin to have any involvement with it uh, at some point in time perhaps uh, if the Bitcoin market cap goes maybe a hundred fold from here the market will be large enough to accommodate some type of money laundering but it appears that uh, FinCEN is uh, getting in early on the game and what they're telling us is that if you are involved in buying and selling Bitcoins for currency and those are going to be legal tender currencies issued by the governments or substitutes thereof. I'm not sure what that means. Probably things like Dwala, Liberty Dollars, etc. If you're involved in the buying and selling of those like Mt. Gox, then you are going to come under FinCEN regulations. But if you're strictly a user, someone who's mined the coins themselves and does not intend to sell them, uh, then you're not going to come under these anti-money laundering restrictions and again uh, it's gonna depend on how far of a reach FinCEN has there's a lot of Europeans who said today well so what they, they don't apply here well I, I don't know but uh, they definitely have said in their document that uh, it applies not only to legal tender US legal tender but legal tender anywhere in the world uh, but does that apply to jurisdictions outside? I don't know. Mt. Gox is, uh, was uh, uh, domiciled in Japan. They're moving to the United States. But uh, how do uh, FinCEN uh, rules apply? Well, we can see things like um, we had in-trade before it was shut down. Uh, the U.S. Uh, trading with that was shut down. Uh, we had uh, U.S. Uh, citizens trading with the gambling sites. That was shut down. So... I don't know if that they have the authority to impose these uh, AML and uh, other restrictions on foreign countries and exchanges in foreign countries, but they certainly have the authority uh, to impose them on people who are using U.S. dollars and U.S. citizens who are trading on those. So very big news, uh, very big news on the price of the Bitcoin and on the clarification from FinCEN. I think they're both very positive in the long run. I think it's good that uh, this is behind us now. Um, know your customer and uh, anti-money laundering limitations have already been applied to the major exchanges uh, if, if you if you've got a bank wire to Mt. Gox or any of the others then you've already complied I'm not gonna let you do that unless you comply with the know your customer rule so very good to see this clarification as some have pointed out uh, this may be the thing that Amazon and others are waiting for to see this clarification and that might open the door I know that some have said uh, that uh, it's just a matter of maybe uh, six months or so before Amazon begins to accept the Bitcoin. And then what kind of a price are we going to be looking at? Maybe 500 to to 1000 And we'll talk to you next time.